few weeks ago, I shared a really cool local voice assistant project that allowed you to switch out the PCB from a Nest Mini 2 in exchange for a board that has an ESP32 and works directly with Home Assistant and ESP Home. And in today's video, I'm going to be answering some of the most common questions from that video and walking you through the full setup and installation process. Before we get started, it is worth mentioning that this project is still in development, so potentially in the future the PCB design could change and also the code could change. And while the code can be changed by you, with the PCB you'd have to either modify it yourself or buy a brand new PCB. This project is a great little project and what makes it really cool is the fact that everything gets housed inside of the Nest Mini. You can make use of the volume and touch controls and you can also reuse the Google Power Cable. If this is your first local voice assistant project, I would recommend checking out some of the alternative options like the Atom Echo or the ESP32 S3 Box 3, which is such a mouthful, but these other projects are easier to source and they're much cheaper. However, if you've got the time, patience and a little bit of money, then this again is a great project to have a play with. The first thing that you'll need for this project is obviously a Nest Mini 2. In the previous video, a lot of people asked me whether this could be done with the Nest Mini 1 or even the Amazon Echo, and the answer for that is pretty much straight up no. The reason for this is because this PCB has been designed specifically for the Nest Mini 2, and it's designed as a drop-in replacement, so you take the old board out, you put the new board in, and it fits and everything works as it should. Personally, I'm an Amazon Echo user, and I have these dotted around all over my house, and I'd love to see something like this created for an Amazon Echo, and if anybody in the community wants to create it or share it, then I'll gladly be checking it out and sharing it with you guys. For this project, I picked up a couple of secondhand units from eBay for around £20. If you are picking them up secondhand, I'd definitely recommend testing them first, just to ensure all the features and functionality are working as expected. I did have one secondhand unit that had a really dodgy speaker, and I didn't realise this until after I'd actually swapped the board and then had to test it with the Google board, just to confirm it was the speaker's fault. Once you've sourced your Nest Mini 2, you'll also need to pick up the Onju voice board, which you can get directly from PCBWay, who are also the sponsor of today's video. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for CNC, 3D printing, PCB design and assembly, and much, much more. If you've got a smart home sensor, gadget or idea that you want to see brought to life, just like the Onju voice board, then head over to PCBWay.com and get started today. Using the link in the description, it will take you to the PCBWay page for the Onju voice project, and from here you will actually be able to order the PCBs. It's worth noting that when you place an order, the minimum number of PCBs that can be ordered is 5, so I would suggest maybe getting some buddies involved and all of you getting this together. On the previous video, lots of people teamed up and they made a big order together, so that might be something you want to do. Maybe check out the Mark Tech Discord or Facebook group and maybe find some people that want to share this with you. With ordering, you've got two different choices. You've got the choice of only the PCB, which is just the blank board and you'll need to put all the components on yourself, or you've then got the PCB and assembly. So this is totally up to you. Obviously the assembly costs, but you do get all the parts added on for you. For the boards that I'm using, I opted for the PCB and assembly, but again, this is going to be totally up to you. Once you're happy with your selection, go ahead and press add to cart, and you'll then be presented with another box that will allow you to customise the build and make changes to the manufacturing process and properties. Some of these changes that you make may affect the build time and also increase the price, but again for me, I left all of these as the standard options and just submitted the order. Once you've placed an order, you'll receive regular updates and information from PCBWay, and they'll keep you updated on the progress right the way from manufacturing all the way to delivery. It's a very fluid process, and this was one of my first experiences with using PCBWay, and I'll definitely be returning for future orders. So at this point, you should now have your Nest Mini 2, your Onju Voiceboard PCBs, and also a working and accessible version of Home Assistant that also has ESP Home installed, just because I'm not going to be running through the setup and installation of those things. So if you do have those things, you're going to be good to get started. We'll start with a nice and easy step, which just involves adding a couple of add-ons to Home Assistant. The first add-on that we're going to add is Piper, and we can find this by opening up the add-ons, clicking the add-on store, and just entering Piper. With Piper installed, we're going to leave the configuration set to its defaults, but we're going to want to make sure that Start on Boot is ticked, and also Watchdog. We can then just start the add-on. The next add-on is going to be Whisper, so again just press Add-on Store, enter Whisper, and click Install. 
With Whisper, open its configuration. There are a couple of different options that you can modify, and these modifications are all going to be hardware dependent. You've got the option of changing models, which are used in transcription. The smaller models, like Tiny Int 8, are going to run faster on smaller hardware, things like Raspberry Pi 4s, but they're going to be a bit less accurate. If you've got some stronger hardware, you could make use of Base, or you could make use of the Medium Int 8, which is one of the larger ones. For this demonstration, I'm using Home Assistant that's running on a dedicated mini PC, and it's got plenty of power to run all of these models, but for this demo, I'm making use of the base model. With your options all set, head back to the Info tab, and you want to also make sure that Start on Boot and Watchdog are also enabled, and then start the add-on. The third and final add-on that we're going to be using is Open Wake Word. So for the last time, press the Add-on Store, search for Open Wake Word, and click Install. With this one installed, we're also going to be just using the default settings, so just ensure that Start on Boot is enabled and also Watchdog, and click Start on the add-on. To complete the installation of the add-ons, head into your Home Assistant integrations and select Configure on each of the three integrations that should have been auto-discovered by Home Assistant. With all of our add-ons installed, we can now flash our PCB. To do this, we're going to need a micro USB to USB-A cable. If we take our new PCB out of the anti-static bag, We'll see that there's a small black cap which is covering the micro USB port. On the bottom of the board you'll see that there's two buttons, one is labelled as boot and one is labelled as reset. We're now going to take our USB cable and we're going to plug the USB A end into our computer and pressing and holding the boot button we're going to insert the micro USB cable into the board. With the board connected to our PC we can now open up ESP Home. When I'm accessing ESP Home, I'm making use of Google Chrome and I'm using a HTTPS connection which will give me full access to ESP Home's web tools. If you don't have access via HTTPS to your ESP Home, then you can still follow this install, but rather than connecting the device to your computer, you'll instead need to plug the board into whatever device that you're running ESP Home on. With ESP Home now open, we're going to need to create a new device, so select New Device. This will then ask you for a device name and the Wi-Fi credentials. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to call mine onju-voice, but you can call this whatever you want. Once you've entered your Wi-Fi credentials, press the next button and it will present you with a list of different device presets. The preset that we're going to use is the ESP32-S3, so select that one. It's now going to give us the option to flash the default firmware, but rather than doing this now, we're going to instead press skip. We should now see this device that we've created offline and in ESP Home, and if you select Edit, it will take you into the barebones config for this. In that config, you should be able to see your encryption key, and we're going to need to copy this and paste it into something like Notepad, as we'll need it in just a second. Once you've got that encryption key copied somewhere else, we're going to select everything that's in the config and just delete it all. We can now open up my Onju voice code, which is linked in the description below, and we can copy all of that and paste it in here. If you're on Windows, if you press Ctrl and F, you can search the config, and the term that we need to search for is called change me. This should jump you down to the line in the code that has the word change me in it, and we'll need to now copy our encryption key from the notepad and paste it over the top of change me. There is an additional part of this config that you can change if you want to, and it's the access point password. So you can scroll back up to the top, and I just have it set as password, but you can change this to something more secure if you wish. With that all done, we can now go ahead and press save, and we can click install. Selecting install will present you with a list of different installation options. As I'm making use of HTTPS, I can press the plug into this computer as the option, but again, if you don't have that HTTPS connection, you can make use of the option below, which is to plug the board into the machine that ESP Home is running on. Once you select your option, the installation process will begin, and it should just take a couple of minutes to actually run through the whole process. Once it's completed, you'll be prompted by ESP Home, letting you know that it's all finished. You can then unplug the board from your PC. If you give the board a couple of seconds and then plug it back in, it should start booting to that newly flashed firmware, and after a minute or so, the LEDs on the front of it should all flash green, indicating that it's connected to our Wi-Fi. If we look back in ESP Home, we should also see that the device is now online and visible, indicating that our board has been successfully flashed and is accessible. Next comes the fun part, which is the teardown of the Nest Mini. 
You'll need to start by removing the locking screw and to do this you just need to lift up the rubber tab on the back of the device which will reveal that locking screw. With the screw removed you can then just twist the mini and it should lock into place and once it does you can carefully pry the device open and when I say carefully it's because directly opposite that locking screw hole is a ribbon cable which is used for power and you don't want to accidentally pry through this. With the device now open we've got these two sections which are the top half and bottom and the bottom is only held on by this ribbon cable so we can safely remove this by just lifting up the tab connector and gently pulling the ribbon cable out. Putting the bottom of the case to one side we can now just focus on this main top half and the next thing we need to do is to remove the speaker which is held in by four screws. Removing the four screws will detach the speaker which is also held in by just one small connector and we can gently pull this out to disconnect the speaker totally from the top half. On some of the units that I've tested out this connector can be really stiff so you may need to apply a little bit of force but just be careful not to apply too much and damage the cable or the connector. Now that both the bottom case and the speaker have been removed we've just got this top section which houses the PCB and its controls. In order to actually access the PCB we need to remove the covering plate which is also held in by screws so let's remove these five screws. With those five screws removed we can now lift up the covering plate to reveal the Nest Mini PCB. On the Nest Mini PCB you'll see that we've still got this ribbon cable attached so we can remove this from the Nest and we can attach this to the corresponding point on our brand new Onju board. When you attach the ribbon cable to the Onju board you want to take a couple of minutes here just to ensure that that cable is in correctly and that it's firmly attached because it's an absolute pain in the butt to have to keep disassembling this thing and checking all of the cables and connections. The ribbon cable is the only part of the Google board that we're going to be taking and reusing and you'll be happy to hear that there's no more screws holding the PCB in place so let's remove Google. I found that the easiest method for doing this was to remove a section of the foil and then just gently lift it from one side. The board's only held in place by a few small adhesive rings and as you lift it from one side you'll start to hear them slowly peel. To stick the new board in place you can try and reuse the adhesive rings that are found on the back of the Google board but I have failed at removing these on the few times that I've tried doing it and I'm often just left with sticky globs which actually still work at sticking the board in place. Alternatively you can just forget about them as the board won't wiggle around too much unless you plan on using your mini as a maraca. Another section that's on the Google board that you can try and remove and reuse is the LED divider. This little divider helps divide the LEDs up so that when it's shining through the top of the case they don't over reflect and blur into each other but in a test where I've actually removed the divider and placed it on another board I haven't really found any difference so I don't really think it's worth it. It's also quite hard to remove and it's made out of a weird foamy material so just like with the adhesive rings this one's totally up to you. Because the Onju board is a direct replacement as long as you've got all of those cables and connectors all pushed into the correct points and everything's making contact the board should just work. However, before you do a full reassembly, I would highly recommend that you just test the components by plugging them into each other before screwing it all in place because as I said, this is a right pain to have to take everything apart just to check that our cable is pushed all the way in. With our new Onju board now in place, we basically just need to run through the steps that we previously went through but in reverse in order to get the device back together. We'll start by adding the covering plate. On the back of your covering plate there might be a little bit of thermal paste and you can just scrape this off and wipe it down before putting that plate back on top. You can then add in the five screws and add the speaker connector. You can put the speaker back on top, add in the four screws, connect the ribbon cable and then attach the back plate and then finally add that locking screw. For the final step we're going to just jump back into Home Assistant where we need to set up a voice assistant and utilise the open wake word. To do this press settings, voice assistant and then add assistant. I'm going to call my assistant on due voice but again you can call this whatever you want. We then need to fill in the voice assistant options and these options are going to be based on your region and your voice preferences. As I'm a Home Assistant Cloud subscriber I'm going to be using Home Assistant Cloud as my options. For speech to text I'm going to choose to use faster whisper. For wake word select open wake word and then choose your preferred wake word. It is possible to now create your own custom wake word but I'm not going to be showing that in this video so for now I'm just going to be using the default OK Naboo. 
With the voice assistant options all configured, we can press save and then we can plug the Nest Mini in using the Google cable. Our device should be automatically discovered by Home Assistant and we should be able to configure it using the ESP Home integration. If we select the device in the ESP Home integration, it will give us access to a few different controls, sensors and configuration. Inside of the configuration, you can choose which assist pipeline you're going to use and the one that we're going to be using is that newly created voice assistant, so in my case it's the Onju voice. With that last option changed, that's now all of the setup and configuration all done and you should now be able to start issuing voice commands and controlling your devices with your voice. You can check which of your devices and entities are exposed by heading back into the voice assistant and selecting exposed at the top. You can then choose to either expose more devices or if you don't want to expose a particular thing, you can also remove it from here. Using your voice, you should now be able to start making use of that wake word that you set. So in my case, it was OK Nabu, and I can start doing things like this. OK Nabu, is the office light on? No, off. And things like this. OK Nabu, turn off the Hypercube Nano. Turned off light. OK Nabu, turn off the office light. Turned off switch. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at how to switch out the PCB from the Nest Mini to the brand new Onju voice board. If there's a particular feature or some additional things that you'd like to see covered about this project in a future video, then be sure to let me know what they are in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, then don't forget to drop me a like, and if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes, these awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members and if you want to be one of these awesome dudes and help support my channel which in turn allows me to create content like this then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me all in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.